few weeks ago, a blog post flew through my feed. It discussed the hiring of Anton Kaplanian, one of the thought leaders behind RTX and DLSS and a great many other graphics technologies, to his new position at Intel. Being very busy, I dismissed it as mere noise. After all, high-value employees move around all the time, and while I knew that Intel had been making a lot of noise in the GPU area of late, how seriously should this be taken? Well, what a difference a week makes. By the time the Intel Architecture Day presentations had died down, I was confident that the noise was not mere bravado and should be taken very seriously indeed. They introduced a huge shift in CPU microarchitecture, a new set of discrete high-performance graphics cards now dubbed ARC, based on their XEHPG microarchitecture, and a new set of technologies for gaming. The most exciting one to me? XESS. What does this have to do with the carelessly dismissed blog post? Let me explain. Hot on the heels of our Fidelity FX Super Resolution video last week comes the introduction of XESS, Intel XE Super Sampling. That's right, even before its newest high-profile hire, Intel has been preparing some exciting new upscaling tech. However, unlike AMD's FSR 1.0, which uses individual frame features for its upscaling, XESS attempts to take on DLSS in multi-feature neural net-based prediction. As a side note, we won't get into FSR 1.0 or the fundamentals of neural networks in this video, as we've covered them in detail previously. So let's jump right into Intel's announcement and presentation. By the way, shouldn't XESS be pronounced XS? There's a missed branding opportunity there somewhere. Now, like DLSS, XESS takes a set of features, including a lower resolution image, motion information, and others, and attempts to construct a higher resolution image based on them. Also, like DLSS, they use a trained neural network as the foundation for this task. But here is where Intel and NVIDIA take slightly different routes. On one hand, NVIDIA uses the dedicated tensor core silicon found in their Turing and later chipsets to quickly perform neural net-based prediction. Intel, on the other hand, is introducing two parallel implementations of XESS. The first will utilize Intel's XMX matrix engines found in its XE cores on its new Alchemist GPUs. A deeper dive into the XEHPG microarchitecture would be a fun video, and one I'll definitely put on the list for later. But for the sake of our comparison today, it's only necessary to understand that each XE core will contain 16 vector engines, 16 matrix engines, or XMX, as well as cache and shared memory access. Think of them as Intel's version of AMD's DCUs that we talked about before. And it's that XMX silicon that will perform the high-speed, high-ordered matrix math and perform many of the same functions that the tensor cores do on NVIDIA. Yes, I understand that many people will fume with rage at the comparison, but if you've ever performed manual vectorization of feature sets, you'll understand the rough equivalency. That said, being the premier implementation meant to run best on Intel, you can expect the XMX variant of XESS to be the first out, run better, and receive the lion's share of attention. After all, Intel, quite rightly, wants to sell its ARC cards. But here's the extra cool part. Intel is also releasing XESS for microarchitectures that have no XMX acceleration. GPUs that support the DP4A instruction set, which provide lighter weight, slightly less precise, hardware-accelerated transforms will also be able to enjoy the goodness. That's right, GPUs, including those from NVIDIA, AMD, and even Intel's most recent integrated XE ones, will be able to use XESS's second implementation. I suspect performance will not be as amazing as the full-fledged version, but a free hardware-accelerated neural net-based upscaler that will improve the graphics performance of the XPS 13 I'm typing this sentence on right now? Yes, please. 
That said, the DP4A version will take a bit longer to develop and is assumed to be released into open source later this year. Now, it's that aspect to me that's particularly exciting, as it's the iterative collaboration the open source community fosters that will ensure constant innovation and optimization to XESS. So, how does it run? Based on Intel's own demo, up to double the frame rate and near-native quality 4K upscaling from 1080p will be possible in the first release. Now, as with any other demo, of course, they exhibit the best-case scenarios to demonstrate the tech in its best light, but that's perfectly normal. But even with slightly less performance, or with less fidelity, it would still be impressive. Check this out. Here's a last-minute addition to be included just as the video is being polished off. The latest news is that Intel's XESS will not require pre-training of its model by the developer. Whether this means parameterization will be static, or that they will include an online or runtime training mode remains to be seen. But if accurate, this makes an interesting twist. So just last week we talked about FSR 1.0 and outlined the simplistic single-frame upscaling technology it provides. This week, after Intel's Architecture Day presentation, we see a major shot they're firing across NVIDIA's bow. Not only are they attempting to reach feature parity in hardware accelerated upscaling, but further dull DLSS's luster by providing an implementation that will work to a lesser extent on a wide variety of GPUs. Add to that its open source nature, and we could be looking at a paradigm shift in upscalers that on one hand, commoditizes the technology, but provides further incentive for NVIDIA to press its competitive advantage. The upshot of this is everyone wins. You know, suddenly Intel's new hire makes a lot of sense. But for now, that's all we know about XESS. There's a lot to be gleaned from forthcoming announcements, code drops, and white papers, so we'll continue to follow this one very, very closely. In the meantime, what is your opinion, not only of the technical aspects, but its impact on the marketplace? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also, feel free to add any questions or suggestions you might have. And if you enjoyed this video and would be interested in seeing more, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated and really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.